St. Francis de Sales is one of my all-time favorite saints. He is a tremendously amazing saint, and he is the patron saint of apologetics and evangelization, of defending the Catholic faith. And he's awesome. He's wonderful. In fact, we're going to look at his life right now, and we are going to see that he is responsible for converting nearly 60,000 people to the Catholic faith. You heard me right. Nearly 60,000 thousand people, Protestants, all anti-Catholic, vehemently anti-Catholic Protestants, back to the Catholic Church. And this is because he was extremely holy, passionate, loving, kind, and mild, even in the face of people hating him when he went to preach, and even chasing him out of town with dogs, and even having to sleep in trees, and having people walk out on him, call him names, and really just hate him on all sides. In the midst of all of that, he kept persevering, he kept loving, he kept showing the kindness of Christ, and he ended up converting over 60,000 Protestants back to the Catholic Church. This is his story. Francis de Sales, even from a young age, he knew he wanted to be a priest. He knew that God was calling him to the priesthood. He also knew that his parents wanted him to become a lawyer, and so he kept this a secret from them. On the one hand, he would study really hard and he would go to law school, and then on the other hand, he would pray a lot to God. On the one hand, he would write and he would do fencing and things that pleased his dad. And then on the other hand, he would fast and he would have great devotion to God and try to serve God in every way possible. So he was secretly living out his life for God. And he ended up going on to get a doctorate. And after his doctorate, he came home and finally confessed to his father saying, hey, Dad, I want to become a priest. I feel God calling me to the priesthood. And his father did not want this, and they argued about it fiercely. And after a lot of argumentation and a lot of persuasion on the part of Francis, he ended up becoming ordained in 1593. He ended up becoming a priest and working in a parish for a few years. He was a great priest, serving the people, teaching, helping others, hearing confessions, and doing normal priestly duties. Where Francis's heart really lied was evangelizing a people near Geneva, Switzerland. John Calvin, who broke away from the Catholic Church and fiercely hated the Catholic Church, vehemently hated the Catholic Church, and railed against the Catholic Church constantly, in his region, he created a stronghold for Protestantism. With the help of a Protestant duke, he made his whole area Protestant, and he would keep out all of the Catholic influence and the Pope's nose from snooping around, and he would create like a base from which Protestantism could grow and flourish and hopefully take over the Catholic Church. This is the people that John had influenced, and Mr. Calvin had caused all of them to be anti-Catholic as well. Even the Catholics that lived there, he would send out evangelists and convert them to Calvinism. Even in their churches on Sundays, they would hear rantings against the Catholic Church, against the Pope, how the Pope is the devil, how the Catholic Church is the whore of Babylon, and how it's from the devil, and how evil it is. And then it would influence all of these people in that region and help them to become staunchly anti-Catholic and also haters of the Catholic Church. These are the people that Francis de Sales wanted to convert. His heart went out to them. He saw his brothers and sisters and how they had been duped and how they had walked away from Christ and his church, and he wanted to bring them back. So he made that his mission. And he would travel the mountains and he would travel these long roads at night when it was freezing cold, when it was snow when it was raining and freezing rain, and he would barely arrive intact. In fact, sometimes he was so cold that his skin was all broken open and it would bleed. He spent nights outside sometimes because he would preach and they would kick him out of the village or kick him out of the town, and he would have to sleep outside under the stars in the snow. And sometimes he would stay with Catholic couples who gave him food and gave him warmth and gave him warm drinks, which would really help him. But on other nights, they would 
would chase him out of town with dogs because they didn't want to hear his preaching. They didn't want to hear his masses. They didn't want to hear anything Catholic, and so they would send dogs after him, and he would have to sleep in trees. He would, it said that he would belt himself to the tree so he didn't fall out, and he would sleep there under the starry nights. Now, that's incredible. Why would this man keep coming back? They hated him, and yet he kept coming back. They kicked him out of the town, and yet he kept coming back. These people were hard-hearted people, and it would take someone incredibly holy, incredibly kind, mild, persevering, someone with tenacity, and that person was Francis de Sales. He never gave up. Time after time after time, he made his long travels there, and he would stay with people and just preach and say Mass, to which hardly anybody would come. And if he started preaching in a church or preaching in the town square, everyone would walk out on him. And he would keep preaching, and he would keep sharing the good news, and he would even go after people and share the good news, and they would all slam their doors in his face time after time after time. For years, he had almost nobody attending his Mass. For years, he had almost nobody nobody hearing his public preaching. And for years, people would just slam the doors in his face and not even give him the time of day. And worse, they would sometimes try to hurt him and even kill him and send him off running. This was the life of St. Francis de Sales, but he kept persevering. He kept praying. Francis had a deep, devout prayer life with God. He frequented the sacraments. He studied, and he had great devotion to Jesus, giving his whole life to him and to this mission. There was no amount of pain, suffering, and no amount of obstacles that would keep Francis from coming back. They pushed him away, he would come back. They hated him, he would come back. He, they cursed him out, he would pray for them. They chased him out of town, he would sleep and then come back. I mean, he, they couldn't get rid of this guy. And he even started to try to play with the kids. Since the parents were so hateful, he would play with their kids. And he, they would see how mild, kind, and gentle he was. And slowly, their hearts started to open to him. And having a new Catholic duke in the area allowed him more freedom to walk around and be a little bit safer, but he continued his preaching for years. And since they slammed the doors in his faces, he needed a new method. I mean, sure, he was making some inroads. He was starting to make a few converts. People were starting to come a little bit more to hear him preach, but he needed a new way into their homes, into their hearts, and into their minds. So St. Francis de Sales, patron of apologetics, started what are known as evangelization tracts. You know the little tracts that Protestants hand out on street corners? Yeah, he pretty much started these. He was one of the first people to use them. He created these little pamphlets. Even before the sun came up, he would drop them in their doors. Even before the sun came up, he would litter the town with these tracts. And he employed the help of many priests and others as well. These Capuchin monks, in fact, would help him distribute these tracts door to door to door, day after day after day. And these little tracts would talk about the truth of the Catholic faith. They would answer common and popular Protestant Calvinist objections to the Catholic faith. And they were so well-written. They were so convincing that many people started converting to the Catholic faith. In addition to these tracts, and in addition to his preaching, his teaching, his masses, and all of these things combined, people started more and more to come back to the Catholic faith. They started coming out in larger numbers to his preachings in the town squares, in the marketplaces, or even in certain churches and buildings. They even came to his masses more. And over a few more years of doing this, Hordes of people started flooding to Francis. Mountainsides of people were attending his talks. Mountainsides of people were attending his masses in churches and outside. Vast numbers of people flocked to Francis to hear his preaching, to see his love, to see his devotion to God, and to learn from him, and they came back to the Catholic faith. And in the end, he, it's said that he converted nearly 60,000 Protestants back to the Catholic Church. That 
is amazing. Not 60, not 600, 60,000. And he didn't do it with hate. He didn't do it with yelling at them, calling them idiots, telling them how stupid they were. A lot of times we get so angry and bitter with people online because they won't listen to us and we don't convert a single soul. We just push them away. But because Francis was so holy, because he was so loving and kind, and because he had such perseverance, he ended up creating miracles in a sense. God worked his powerful grace. God worked his miracles in the life of Francis and brought so many people back to the Catholic Church. In fact, some of the top theologians and Protestant pastors in that area also converted to the Catholic Church. I mean, this is a phenomenal lesson for us. This is incredible. Think about one person in your family that hates the Catholic Church or that hates God, or is always complaining about the Catholic Church. Have you converted them? We can hardly convert one person in our family or around us in our influence, much less 60,000. Have you tried to evangelize them? If Francis was in your position, he would be praying for them nonstop, and he would be finding creative ways to start conversations with them, and he would speak to them with the utmost love and respect and kindness. He would never get angry, never lose his patience. He was so mild. I mean, when, even when people asked him for things, it said that even when he said no, they would be just as happy because he was so loving and kind about it that they were like, oh, okay, that's fine. <laughs> and he would send people away just as happy as if he said yes. And so Francis would look for ways to evangelize people. We should be looking for ways to evangelize our family, our friends, praying for them and caring for their souls so much that we may give them a book and say, hey, will you read this and let me know what you think of it? Or start a conversation. Hey, why don't you go to church anymore? Hey, what is it exactly that you hate about the Catholic Church? And just be so loving. Hey, do you know why I love being Catholic? Let me share with you why I love being Catholic. No, I don't want to hear about it. I hate the Catholic Church. Get out of my face. Oh, okay, sure. And then you wait a little while and you try it all over again. They're going to shut you down. They're going to yell at you. They're going to tell you that you're stupid and that you're dumb and that you follow a fairy in the sky. But you know what? That shouldn't dim our light. It didn't dim Francis's. It only grew his light because he was a man of intense prayer. He ended up going on to become a bishop obviously. He'd become a bishop, and he was a great bishop. He spent all his time hearing confessions, catechizing people, and really helping people to be devoted to God, helping to give them spiritual advice and spiritual direction. In fact, he gave so much spiritual direction that he often complained that he had no time for himself, but he never wanted to give it up because he constantly wanted to help people he constantly wanted to give to them and not to himself. He was always thinking of other people before himself, and that's what makes him a saint. He's also famous for giving counsel and spiritual direction for the infamous Saint Jane de Chantal, who was a mystic and who was growing so close to Christ she was becoming fully in union with him. So Francis, it said, would actually learn from her and from her mysticism, and she in turn would learn from him and his wisdom. And he wrote letters to her, which you can find in different books. And there's even a book called The Wisdom of St. Francis de Sales and St. Jane de Chantel. And you can find quotes in these books that will help you. Read a few quotes a day. Meditate on them. They'll be like bread to your soul, like water to your soul. They're beautiful. And in fact, St. Francis wanted to counsel people so much that he went on to write a book called Introduction to the Devout Life. It is one of the six single best written devotional books ever written in the Catholic Church. It's said to be one of the top six devotional books ever, and one of the rare things about it is it's not written for priests and nuns like most books are, although priests and nuns would get a ton out of it. It was written for lay people like us. It's written for people to learn how to be holy by living in the world. Many times people think you have to become a priest or a nun in order to be holy, but Francis shows that you don't have to be, that anyone from anywhere in any state of life can be holy. And this book 
I highly recommend it. It has every single thing that you would ever want to know to become holy. It talks all about prayer and how to pray, how to enter into connection and union with God, how to meditate. It talks about how to talk, how not to talk, slander, gossip, rash judgment, how not to judge people, how to fight temptation, how to overcome obsessive thoughts. I mean, literally, you name it, and the book talks about it. It's one of those books where whatever page you open up to, you're going to have to work on whatever you're reading because it's just so good and it speaks to your heart and it calls you to a deeper level of devotion. And this is from someone who lived the saintly life from an early age. I mean, he was friends with two popes. These popes saw him even before he died as a saint. And one of the popes employed him to give catechetical lectures in his area, and Francis helped this pope out. I mean, a direct request from the pope himself. That's pretty amazing. That's pretty awesome. I mean, no pope's ever going to request anything from me because I'm not holy. But Francis de Sales and St. Jane de Chantel were two holy people, one a mystic and one a man for the people that everybody can relate to. So what's the takeaway from this? What can we learn from the life of St. Francis de Sales? Number one, he was a man of intense prayer and sacraments. He said he could have never continued to go back to the people who hated him if he didn't have a devout prayer life, if he didn't give himself to God every single day and God didn't fill him up with his life and his love. And the sacraments, I mean, these are indispensable. If you try to evangelize and share your faith online or in person and you don't have a prayer life, then stop. Don't even share the faith because it's not pleasing to God. God wants you to have a relationship with him first, and that is the foundation of everything. A holy life makes all the difference. I mean, look at Martin Luther. Martin Luther also wanted to bring people back. He also wanted to reform the church. He also had really good intentions. But what happened when Luther faced persecution, was chased out of town, when people wouldn't listen to him, when they ridiculed him? He got frustrated. He ended up becoming bitter. His heart ended up becoming angry. And he started yelling at all of these people. He started writing them angry letters, telling them where they could go, calling them evil, calling them from Satan. And I see many traditional and other Catholics doing this sort of thing, just lashing out at people and calling them names. That is what Martin Luther did. That is what John Calvin did. That is what the enemies do. That is not what saints do. Luther had good intentions, but he didn't have the holiness of life. He didn't have that deep life of God within him, and it ended up sending him off a cliff to his own demise. Whereas Francis de Sales experienced the exact same things, but he stayed rooted in Christ. He prayed so long and so hard that Christ continued to give him that love, kindness, patience, perseverance, tenacity, and joy to smile even in the face of persecutions. And so prayer and spirituality are indispensable. That's one thing we learn from the saints. Also studying. Study your faith. Learn your faith. Love your faith. I mean, that's what got Francis de Sales to really be effective as well. I mean, we can't just be holy. We have to know our faith to be able to share it as well. You can't give what you don't have. Also, we learn from him the acceptance of suffering. Through every situation known to man, he accepted the suffering with joy. And even when he was ready to give up, he would offer it up to God and he would turn it into a gift of love that he would give him to Jesus because Jesus suffered out of love for him. And so he would give these gifts of suffering up out of love for Christ. He never saw the other people, the Protestants, the Catholics who left the Catholic Church, he never saw them as enemies. He always saw them as his brothers and sisters, as lost souls, as souls that just needed the truth, that they were genuinely good people. They were just confused, misled, and misguided. So he always had a positive attitude of the people he was working with. And do we do that with people at our jobs, at home, our friends? people who attack us, people who hate the faith, do we see them as our brothers and sisters? Do we see them as loving children of God who are really good people but are just misled and confused? All of these uh, enemies ended up coming back to the faith because Francis helped them to and had the right attitude 
in disposition of mind. He never got angry. He never condemned people. He never, you know, ranted at them. He never reamed them out. He never had a holier-than-thou attitude like, well, that's just you because you're a pagan, or that's just you because you're an infidel. If you actually knew the truth, you would be holy. He never had that. Let me tell you, and I promise you, this is true, that is not from God. It's from the devil. It is toxic, it is poisonous, and it is not from Christ. Watch how Martin Luther acted. That's how many Catholics act when they evangelize and share the faith. Watch how Calvin act. They call names, they get all on their high horse, and they yell at people and scream at people. That's not what the saints do. There is a complete contrast between rebels who are not spiritually converted in Christ, who have good intentions but are doing it wrong, and then those who have a good prayer life with Christ, who have devotion to Christ, you can see the fruits of that in their life, that they're loving and kind and patient and persevering, even in the hardest circumstances. These are the lessons that the saints call us on to today. And even if you're the person who's more like Luther and you want to be more like St. Francis— that's why we read the lives of the saints, so that they can inspire us, so that they can call us on, and that they can help us to live greater lives of holiness. I know that the saints inspire me, and I hope Francis de Sales and St. Jane de Chantel and Blessed Margaret of Costello and other saints, I hope they help you to become a saint as well. I hope they help to inspire you to become more spiritual and to do what you need to do to go deeper with Christ and to give up those things that aren't of Christ and to be more converted in your heart, to really want to give your life to Christ and to get rid of everything that doesn't belong to him. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, if you found it inspirational, then please like it and please share this inspiration with others, especially during this dark time of quarantine in 2020 when we have the coronavirus and we're all at home and we're locked away. We need inspiration. We need good role models. We need good saints. Please share this with people. Also, right now, Catholic Truth is making a lot of CDs and DVDs, and we're making whole video series, especially one on the saints right now. So if you could help support our ministry, and even if you could give just $15 a month, $25 a month, or even those who want to give life transformative gifts, $50, $100, $200, or $500 a month, we're putting it toward ministry, to saving souls, to changing lives, and to do what St. Francis de Sales does on a mass scale using technology and even ministry in person because we do retreats, confirmation retreats, Catholic school retreats. We do parish missions. We do ministry with teens and youth and young adults. We do a lot at Catholic Truth, not just YouTube. So please, pray about it. Consider supporting our ministry. We'll put a link below and above and at the end. And thank you so much for watching. Subscribe to our channel and God bless you.